Hi and welcome, I'm so excited that you are enrolling in this course. In this course, we're gonna build crude application in PHP and MySQL. Uh, this uh, application will be so simple. We can add task. We can add task and remove task. And we will have pagination here. And we have the ability to print our document. And we will start this from scratch and I'm gonna take you through all the process and how to do it this will be easy we will have also val validation easy validation and basic we will structure our files and everything we have the ability to edit our task we have the ability also to delete task this is complete Crowd application in PHP and this is a free course I'm and I'm really excited about this course and uh, join us in this course so let's talk about crude what's crude and when do we need it and what tools or scripting language do we need examples of crude crude application what is crude crude grid is a very common task in web development crude stands for create read update and delete they may be exist in a content management system and an inventory management system or accounting software if you just started web development you are certainly going to experience a lot of crude grid creation work in your later career the main purpose of crude grid is that enables users to create read update delete data normally normally this data is stored in mysql will be the server side language that manipulate mysql database tables to give front end users power to perform crude action so when do we need it if you if you building users based websites such as forum social network or any website that have registration system where user can edit their information or update them then you you will probably going to perform crude actions what tools or scripting language do we need we need xamp this is software for local web development server and you're gonna need also code editor sublime text or notepad plus plus or atom or any software that you like example of crude let's take example of crude when you register on facebook or twitter you performing one of crude actions which is creating new data in facebook or twitter database this is the create part when you open your profile on facebook you will see your information your unique ID will be used to get your da data among millions of users. You perform read. When you updating your information, that is update part of crude actions. When you deleting data, old post, picture or anything, that is delete part of crude action. We are gonna build this application in very simple way and uh, and I hope you understand a little bit of what's crude and why we need to use crude. And I see you in the next lesson. Hi, the tools that we need in this course is uh, Zam Apache Server. And this is a free for Mac and Windows and Linux also. And we need also uh, Sublime Text. This is also for Mac and Windows and uh, Linux. And you have also Atom. This is a very nice code editor. For Mac users also there is Coda 2. Uh, this is not, uh, there is uh, this version free. And there is also page version. So you can use Sublime Text, Atom or any code editor that you like but this is the tools that you're going to use this is just a software it's easy just to download and install like any other software 
and that is what we're going to need in this course and this is will be a very short and easy course on CRUD application so uh, see you in the next lesson welcome when you, when you install your uh, XAM software you're going to get folder also and your C directory called XAM open this file and uh, open HD docs here where you're going to de develop all your applications you're going to create new file or folder called CRUD2 because I already have one here and uh, open your sublime text and drag and drop your folder now open new file create new file control n save index.php and this one will be our index file so let's structure our files here we need also update.php and we need also delete.php because it's crude app and also we need add.php or insert or whatever you want and what else we need also db.php okay the reason why I why I created these files is index to display all our data and update when you want to update our data and delete of course when you delete uh, any data or task and add when we add and db is for our database connections we're going to create all this later on but first we, we, we need the, the index here we're going to display our all the tasks that we're going to create so what the nice about uh, sublime text is you just type html and click tab this will give you all the necessary html tags for you what else i want here is to add the uh, this code this is jquery free javascript library here and we need we have we have also bootstrap and we have here is uh, bootstrap.css here and the script here normally we keep the scripts in the end of the document here after the closing the body tag but we, but right now we don't need this because it's very small very small site so the title will be crude app and here what we need we need form so instead of creating all this and wasting a lot of time we have in bootstrap just type go to a bootstrap website and go to tables we need tables here this is how you create table you see long code it's very easy just copy this one and go to your index file but before that we need to uh, we need div with container container here div class row and paste uh, but before that we need also to give it a title here title then the center center h1 to do list as you can see we have to do list in the center of our page this center tag will center everything that it's inside it we have h1 tag inside this center now what we need we need uh, div also why this div because we want md of uh, 10 call call md of offset offset 
of one. Okay. Let me now we have all the all the contents here. So let me explain what I did here. It's very simple. I created div with a column or uh, 10 columns md this is a uh, medium size columns offset of one because i want to center all the content here if we if i said for example offset of five see what will happen this is offset by five columns here that that's why we we just added here one so it's uh, it's in the center now. I want margin from top like 50 pixel or 100. 70, uh, 70 pixel. I think it's great. It's the in the center. We have margin margin here. Now what we need? I need to add a button here and here. Or let's add one button to add content. So before of so in the center we need it here so I'm gonna go here and type um, let's say button Y button you're gonna see why I type of button also uh, give it class BTN BTN of uh, let's say success so we have the button now here but I want to make it here in the left side after the table I think here yeah <clears throat> we're gonna have the button will be here and also I need another button let's just copy this and paste it here and call it print because we want to print it uh, give it a default default class we have this print I want to make uh, I want to put this print button in on the right so we have a class of bull right, uh, bull right. okay we have print here and we have add, add uh, task now when we click add we want to be able to add task but first let's edit this table after here I'm going to add H HR which is line line here and we need also like break tag a little bit we wanna give it a little bit margin we just need name I think name and number here like serial number let's call it task we don't need all this we need two only we don't need all this thank you yeah. now we created the index page or the home page we're gonna continue adding buttons here in the next lesson. Hi, we're gonna continue our app and we're gonna style it. I wanna add uh, like module when I click add task and I wanna have also uh, two buttons here for editing and uh, deleting and this button for will be for printing our document this will be also easy so now let's go ahead to sublime text as you can see it's getting messy so what we're gonna do I'm gonna show you a trick here in sublime text uh, click control and shift and P and uh, just uh, type uninstall package you're gonna install package here this window will appear just type beauty we, we wanna have this extension for I already installed I think beautiful uh, 
HTML I have it here just type beautiful HTML here or beautify HTML and click OK this beautify HTML now what you're gonna do you're gonna click control A select all and go to edit and press beautify HTML as you can see our code will be very nice structured so now let's add uh, the buttons first after uh, here I'm gonna copy this one and add here a uh, href tag and uh, give it a class of btn btn uh, success let's say edit this is for editing and another one also will be for deleting just copy and paste make it danger so when I have it uh, when I have this button to be read color uh, delete or remove delete let's take a look now we have these two buttons I want to make uh, this row bigger so we're going to go to here the mark and give it class call md of 10 let's see now it's looking better and this button it's, I think okay it's looking good now let's add the module part here if you go to google and search for bootstrap module here you're gonna find uh, maybe the first this uh, w3 schools w3 schools will give you the, the code here if you are lazy like me just copy and paste this one and instead of typing all I already have this button I'll just copy this this code we want to have the model here and the way this model work is you need to target the ID of the module here the div as you can see this div holds all this content the module so this ID should you remember we made the button here add task and we want to target this div my module so we're gonna say data data target equal to my model this one and also I'm gonna say uh, data and I'm gonna say data toggle model now if you go to and now if you refresh now we have this module as you can see and uh, by the way this code will never work if you don't have jQuery let's delete jQuery and check if we have if you don't have jQuery as you can see that's why we need jQuery code we want to create form inside this module now so we go here inside the module here change that uh, this is the title make it add task and here we want to have the form in here it in between this div tag you're gonna say form so div div class uh, this this class will be form group We're gonna give it a label of uh, task name and input type of text. We wanna make it required. This required. The name will be task. But still, we did not create any 
we did not created any database so on the next part we're gonna create the database and uh, we will be able to add a task so let's give it a class of form control by, by the way if you don't have any idea about this uh, classes it's all bootstrap classes if you don't know anything about bootstrap it's very easy it's framework a CSS and JavaScript framework it's really great for to create uh, create any style quickly any website it's a very nice library so we have now we have the input and we need uh, we need to have input another input for submitting name send and value will be sent okay uh, we need class also btn because this is the button let's take a look now now we have this button uh, this form it's very easy in the next part we're gonna create the database and uh, interact with it and make the connection and everything in the next lesson thank you for watching welcome in this part we will be building our database this part is uh, very easy just go to your uh, XAM application and click admin and here in mysql click admin the database will be opened uh, click new here new and uh, let's call our database maybe crude create this database name okay this is the table we will uh, call the table task task okay tasks and this will be only two fields click ok this will be the id and the name the id will be integer the type integer will be auto incremented and uh, the name make it bar char 100 the length 100 and click ok now we have our database here we need to connect to the database you remember we have here db.php we will make the connection now we will make a variable called db equal to new new mysql i so what i did now here i created variable and i make instance of this object this is my SQL object this new keyword means give me an instance of my SQL now I have here my SQL class what I will do here I, I can say db connect okay this is function inside my SQL I class now this is SQL class okay I can say I can call any function inside my SQL I this function takes four parameters the first is localhost because we're developing in our uh, in, in our computer the second is the username is root the third is the password we don't have password and the fourth is the database name which is i think crude crude yes you remember here we created our database crude okay now we make the connection to test this we can say if db echo 
let's say just success so just to test if uh, we connect in successfully we go to index we need to include this file include db.php so let's update successful it's uh, okay we connected successfully we will make if not connected it doesn't really matter now because we are connected anyway close this file we don't need anymore we have the connection here now what we want to do first we want to be able to display the data in here in this table what we're gonna do now in here in uh, php tag we're gonna say we're gonna create sql variable any variable and we call it select select star from task so this statement will start will select everything on our database in here since we don't have anything this will return nothing so let's add insert let's add a uh, dummy add task dummy values task 1 task 2 and uh, remember this is auto incremented we, we don't need to add any data here this will be automatic and click go now we have this task 1 task 2 in our database we want to display it in here this should be uh, id not number it's our serial number we just change it to id and we now we want to display this data so what you're gonna say db if you remember db we have it here okay we included the file also in here so it means it's like it's like we copied this code and pasted here this would include those anyway you can say db query this is also function inside the db or the mysql i class what you're gonna say you're gonna add you're gonna add the sql variable in here but first we, we want we want we want to loop in this in this variable we want to create variable called maybe rows so in this variable now we have sets of results we want to loop through this variable okay we go down here into the table our table <coughs> we will make here uh, in here 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 I mean in the body t body table t, uh, body the loop will be here okay let's make php while we will create row variable equal to equal to this variable we created rows rows fetch a source okay to test this now we close the end while loop we end the while loop here just to see is this return anything or not php or oh, let's var dump the data or the row let's see now what's going on here as you can see we have data now we want to display in here you remember this will return associative array so we can loop through it we're gonna end the we're gonna end the loop in here 
and we want to display the ID here echo row of ID copy this code again and display the data in here this will be name is if you remember we have name here and ID here so we want to display this information now the ID and the name let's save and refresh the page indeed we have the data here the ID as you can see 1 and 2 and the ID here 1 and 2 okay now when you click edit or delete how are we gonna know which one is this of course we're gonna use the ID right because this ID will be unique every time so we can target by the ID we can delete and uh, edit also anyway now we want to add we want we want to add tasks here this should be add not send so let's change that one to add text where is the module uh, in instead of send we'll say add task so now our form this is our form to send the form we need method of post we're gonna post the data in the database an action will be add.php why add php why add.php because whenever someone clicks uh, add, tag, add uh, task this form will take all the data and will display it here or will post it in this page that's why we need to add it here oh, we can we can also post it in the same page if you remove this action or we can say also index index.php anyway let's go to add.php and just echo out okay to see if everything is okay let's refresh the page and go to here and click add okay as you can see and here we have add.php so everything is okay now we need way to add the task so what you're gonna say here we have the task name we have this input name of task we want to target this one but before we want to make condition that if the user clicks send here send then we're gonna add this task or, we, or we're gonna take the values in this input type we're gonna go here and the, uh, to the add page remove this we don't need it so we're gonna say if if it's set post send send okay if it's set what you're gonna say if it's set we will create a value called name this name also okay this is as I said you're gonna get this data from this form this this is the data that you're gonna get from this super global variable called name and we will store the data in name okay now we can display name you can say name so now whenever now whatever data you put it here this will be displayed in the next page let's say hi welcome click ok and define name oh not name task 
this should be task sorry so now if you refresh the page if you click add and say hi welcome click add you see hi welcome because we already received the data from the super global variable post so what we want what we need to do now we need to include this db we will include the db here and we need to create sql again or variable uh, insert into tasks values so what you're gonna insert insert in where name notice here between single quotes with oh sorry name and the value should be between quotes name name is this name that we get it from this global variable this should be inserted in inside the database insert into task so this will not only uh, this uh, now we need db query and we're gonna give it sql the variable that we created let's add also another variable call it value or anything because we wanna test this now if if val echo let's echo between h1 tag h1 successfully insert it so what this mean is it's mean if this value is true you can say also equal to true but this is the short way to do it this mean is if it's if there is a value here display successful so let's test now refresh the page this is first task add successfully and how we make sure it's successful go to the mysql as you can see we inserted the data successfully now also the data is here already inserted so now what we wanna we don't wanna display this message if it's successful we're gonna make a header header location index.php so if the data is okay inserted go back to index page this header means this will take you any page if you add like a update or anything this will take you there it's like h reference h ref tag let's test again add task hi there click add as you can see we add it so we now successfully created the database and and connected and uh, also created this form so next part we want to add we want to be able to edit when we click edit we want to go to next uh, another page and we will be able to edit whatever we insert it so see you in the next lesson welcome we're gonna make the delete part in this section this will be so easy just uh, we need a way to target every task using the unique id this is very simple we have remember here delete .php we're gonna say up the uh, delete delete.php question mark 
id equal to php echo row row of id so let's let's me explain this code it's very simple we have href tag here when we click and uh, when we click this href tag this will take us to delete.php question mark id so this is uh, we're gonna also add id in here the id will be up here in query string so that's why we added question mark id equal to echo row of id this id is the same id that we displayed in here the same id so so now if we if we refresh the page and hover over any of this uh, on if we hover on this button now you can see here down on the page id equal one two three four okay when we click now nothing will happen but of course this link will be delete.php id equal to something now go to delete.php we make tag php tag here you're gonna say id equal this variable id get this is also I, this is super global now if you echo out the id if we click delete now we're gonna see the id here same with the other one id2 so how this how this thing happened because we have query string here up in the page when you click delete as you can see delete dot php id equal to something now we use git super global here to get this id exactly exactly this id we can make also instead of id you can say anything like my name okay but we should make also here instead of id my name the same so now let's refresh the page and click as you can see my name equal to something so you can call this anything so we better make it id so we can understand better so what you're gonna do now we're gonna create variable sql delete uh, delete from test where id equal equal to what equal to this id equal to this id now we need query db query sql but now nothing will happen this will be undefined because we need to include the db because this is a new file now so we included the db we can use db now this variable so now let's test we can say also like if we can say this echo let's say done let's click here done this id number one deleted let's check id number one deleted already so instead of this this is not very efficient 
we better make take this code val make value variable here and we can test this var now this is more efficient than the old way so now what we need we need the header like we did before header location location index.php so when we delete anything now this will take us to the same page so click delete oops unexpected oh sorry this one so if you refresh the page now click delete we deleted one and two and three we have nothing now we can add another data in the same way <coughs> so we're done with the delete part thank you for watching hi in this part we're gonna implement update part this is exactly what we have, what we have done in a uh, delete part so this will be very simple also go to let's copy the entire page index.php and we go to update and paste the code here we don't need all all this code we just need the form that's all we need let's make it let's call it update no no Toast. here instead of add task update task here also update task okay but we don't need this model here we're gonna remove this model let's delete oh no model model we don't need model we don't we need only the form We don't need all this delete and delete we don't need the table also let's delete the table okay now we have let's check the now Before that, in the update and or edit part, we need the same code as we did before. And here, we're gonna take all this code because we need the ID only. And instead of delete, we're gonna say update ID equal to something. Now, if we click update, this will take us. To this page we don't need this button also and uh, print we don't need it so let's uh, get rid of this this button we don't need this button we don't need print this model also should delete it oh sorry We don't need the button here print and uh, update we don't need these two buttons we just need this one so now we don't need this sql to display all the data and instead of this we're gonna select all from task where id id equal to 
ID this ID comes from also the the global variable get same same that we the same we did before get ID so this ID will be here so we select all from task where ID equal to this ID we make the query now we just need to to fetch we don't need row or we don't need uh, loop because only one row will return so what you're gonna say just row one row equal to rows fetch associate or associative array this will be here let's var them var dump let's var dump row as you can see we have data we can display the data now inside inside of this input we're gonna say value we need php tag here echo row row of the name only or task no name name only so now if we refresh the page now we see we, we get the id now and instead of to do list we're gonna make this one update update to do list so now everything is okay but we need way to to update so what we what we what you're gonna do here is <laughs> make another sql this will be an uh, update update from task set name equal to task and uh, and this task this task comes from this task come from here name task now we need we need to query this query SQL as we did before so now after this we're gonna say lo header location like before index of PHP we did not make any t uh, validation here we just update now when you click edit oh sorry we need to check if it set this post if this post set we're gonna do all this thing so we're gonna say if it set this time post post send this will happen only if one if someone updates or click the update let's refresh the page click edit now let's change this to anything mm, nothing happened 
Oh, I did not get the uh, data here. We don't have this task now. We need to click task and call it. We need to get this data. Task. So now if we refresh and click edit, click OK. I did mistake here. I shouldn't say update from, just update task set task where id equal to that id that we get it from the query string now if we refresh the page click edit and edit this thing click ok now we edit this one you can edit this also now we edit oh we can delete we can add and we can edit also so now we're done with this part and the uh, next part we're gonna make a pagination here so imagine if we have thousands of records it's it will be very hard to display thousand record in one page so that's why we're going to need pagination here and that uh, that will be easy to do it if you just understand so we're gonna implement pagination in the next lesson welcome let's start creating our pagination in this lesson this will be easy that not that difficult we want to create a variable page equal to is set is set uh, get page this is ternary if condition So this is a page, this is variable, new variable and query string, we're gonna make it. Uh, we're gonna check if it's set page. This is a question. We're gonna check if the page is set. We're gonna set the same value that already have, otherwise we're gonna make it one. Second per page equal to is set, we're gonna also check if it set get per page per page and we're gonna check again we have another condition here we have another condition in here we're gonna say uh, get per page per page less than or equal to 50 question mark i'm gonna explain this per page otherwise set it to five so this what this line of code means we're gonna check if we have per page in our query string in here per page like this one uh, sorry uh, like this one per page like this one in here per page we're gonna check first if we have this variable and query string and we're gonna also check if it's less than or equal to 50 if if this condition is true we're gonna set it we're gonna set the variable otherwise we're gonna set it to 5 now we need to start start this this start we're gonna use it in our sql here condition we're gonna we're gonna edit this one we're gonna add limit to it so this limit will start with this with this variable called start 
so this is start we need condition if page greater than one okay question mark we're gonna make the calculation here page multiplied by per page per per page minus per page otherwise equal to zero so we make we make this calculation here we're gonna check first if per page uh, if uh, page greater than one then we'll make the calculation here page multiplied by per page we minus per page otherwise we're gonna set it to zero now we, we will use this start in here we're gonna make a limit because this is we're gonna limit the results that we are getting from the database so we need here double quotes period period then we're gonna give it start variable and also we're gonna give it here the upper page now now what we need also we got we, we have to know how many results how many records we have in the database so to check to uh, to uh, to check how many results that we have in the database we're gonna create variable called total this total will be will equal to db because we know we need a query we're gonna select start from our database we can chain also because we only want uh, the number of records we're gonna say num rows now if we echo out this result This should be select star from. Now we get ten records. Now we have the total, the total number of uh, rows in here. Now we need to know how many pages. Pages equal to total, total divided by. by per page let's echo out this number and see how many results we got we got two but if we say page equal to five and and uh, and and per page per page equal to let's say three or five we will get the result in here but sometimes this will not give us the exact number this will give us maybe a decimal value so we need the seal function and this seal function will uh, round numbers to nearest integer so we will get only integer value no decimal numbers so now we need the for loop here after the in uh, after the end table we will create a center tag and ul li href let's give it number one so this is we're gonna give it class of pagination because it's a bootstrap let's check if this one work so we have number one now let's give it uh, the we need the loop here let's make the loop first create PHP tag and for loop I equal to one because we want to start from one i less than or equal to uh, pages that we created i 
plus plus this will loop through our we will end for here so now let's display i between this a tag php echo i and let's check now we have two results in here one and two because we displayed only five result five result of ten we have ten records so now so now if, even if we click now nothing work we're gonna give it the values in here pages equal to php we close we will display i in here let's refresh now if you click number two this two result will display one and two i forgot to add to fix this the git, git should be written this way uh, so now if we refresh the page and click number one and two uh, I think everything is working so I didn't pay attention for this variable this should be written the same way as this one apologize for this now our uh, pagination is working if we check click one and two but we wanna also add in here per page right so uh, and per per page equal to php echo where we're gonna get this per page we have already per page here so let's just display let's just echo out per page per page in here okay. if we refresh the page now and click to we get five of we get the page one and per page equal to five we got all the result in here now we can we can add as many records as we as we want this will be even faster because only five results will be displayed this will not take too long so we're done with this uh, pagination now and uh, and see you in the next lesson let's go ahead now and start with our validation so first we, we have to make here we have to cast this into integer so if if the user or anyone try to put letters or something this will start to this will cast to integer so i forgot to save and uh, also in here we should cast to integer int so then we will cast this integer and this one to integer so this will this is the pages this part of this variable will be force force to integer so nothing else will accept it then i think we done in this one and about the delete we receiving the ID here and also this one we will cast to integer so in, on the, in the database this will be also integer and when we update we will do the same here int this also cast it to integer and also we are updating in here so we have the value here in uh, super global uh, post we have html special chars so this function to prevent any injection sql injection we are good here and when we add in the data and also this should be html special char 
to prevent any SQL injections. So now let's test our app. Add new item. Click add new item. And in the, in the next part, we're gonna make small changes also. We will make this button. We want to print this document. This will be very easy. Only one line of code. And I think uh, we also we also gonna make this one uh, a better our table. So we'll see you in the next lesson. Uh, welcome guys and this uh, lesson this will be the final lesson uh, we're, go we're gonna add the functionality to print when we click on print and we're gonna add some styling in here this will be very easy we we'll go to our table in here it's bootstrap this is our table we're just going to add table hyphen hover now if we refresh the page you see we got this nice hover on our table now the button we have print button here this will be also easy just on click type on click on click uh, print this is a ready function now if we refresh the page and click print this will print our document and uh, I think that's it our app now it's working we can add and delete and edit our data and anything like uh, hi there update and uh, also I want to add only uh, another button here update when we click like cancel so we this will take us back to index page instead of clicking here so go to update page and uh, where we have the button in here the input we're gonna make a href index.php let give uh, let me give it a class of btn btn default or warning say back now refresh the page we have this button but we need a little space so we will add the space between the buttons refresh now when you click we go back to home page I think we're done here uh, I hope you understand and enjoy in this course I'm really glad that you finish this course and please don't forget to visit our website fly thoughts and uh, and please don't forget to rate this course and uh, visit us in our website fly .com, and our facebook uh, fly thoughts also the link will be displayed here and uh, and the code will be available to download and uh, the database also will be available to download and practice and this is very uh, simple and easy very easy to understand because uh, th uh, this concept to understand this concept is very important and uh, by understanding this concept uh, crowd concept you will be able to create a registration system a login system and many other stuff so this is really important to understand so thank you for watching again and uh, enrolling in this course and thank you for rating and and see you in future courses Welcome guys, in this lesson we want to upload our app on our server so this will be online we can use it or anyone can use it. 
this is very easy and uh, first you should have hosting I have GoDaddy hosting uh, then next just take all your file and zip it okay you should uh, don't forget no, to select zip not RAR because some hosting does not support RAR I have my file here so I'm going to go to my hosting and click file manager we will go here to file manager okay we will create some uh, new folder let's call it crude inside this folder we want to upload our zip file click upload and uh, browse the file I think my file my file I uploaded in ZAM htdocs crude 2 and this is it and we wait a little bit until this finish after that we can reload and see our files so we unzip we unzip our files in here this is uh, this is our uh, this is our control panel this is unzipped file we go inside and uh, we select all files and we want to move it so click move to crude not crude to the folder that we created and move all the files now we have all the files in here this we don't need this one we can remove it and we can remove the zip file so we have our files in here now if we go now if we browse our uh, files flight screwed this is our this is my folder our app is working as you can see but there is no database so we, will, we need to create a, a database now and this is this is easy actually to, to do it you remember we have here db.php we later on we will change this settings go ahead and create database and in your hosting go to here database click on database we will create a database that uh, we will call it code or whatever database you want so let's create database and call it crude I already have crude 2 let's call it crude 3 it doesn't matter you can call it anything we just uh, we just need a name we created crude 3 so our database is crude 3 now we have our database here we need to assign user to it so we have user here we need to assign this user We'll give it the privilege click ok uh, click make changes now everything is ready we just need to connect to our database so as you can see here crew 3 the privilege users we have the name here so now we go to our DB and change the settings here click view or edit click edit this is the old setting we need to change it this depends on your hosting on godaddy you don't need to change the local host it's already local host. you just need to change root and password and the database name you remember we call it crude 3 so we need the username here and password and where you're going to get this username and password go to your hosting you can find on your hosting the database name the database uh, name you will find it here the user that we assign and the password the password that you already set on your hosting you use the same database so in godaddy as i said we don't need to change this we will change only the name change the name and the password 
so everything is okay now <coughs> but until now nothing will work because we don't have we create a database but there is no data in it so I will show you how to I will show you how to add let's go to UNOS file manager let's go home we will go to insight we will go to database in here we go to admin php uh, php my admin because we wanna we have crow3 here now what we're going to do it's you remember we created a database in our this is the local server this is zam application go to admin this is our local database okay we have crowd here just export click export because we want to export this database we already exported okay now we go we go to our admin here uh php my admin in our hosting okay this is the local the local version and this is the online version so click import and we select the file that we already exported so we click, we click that file we select that file and click go so our database now in here and uh, let's check now refresh the page boom <laughs> We have all our data we can uh, now our app is online let this this now let's call it anything like hey there click add task let's check hey there so now our app is online and uh, the process is uh, very easy as you saw you just need to change the connection connection values here you, sh you will change crow3 you will change the database name and uh, username and password and that's it and and you will upload you will, but first first don't forget to create database okay you create database you assign user to it then then you will select that user that user information and you put it here and you add the database name and you are ready to go so thank you for watching guys this was extra lesson and okay see you in future courses thank you all right welcome and uh, today we're going to add search search functionality to our application a crude application as uh, Brian requested uh, to add the uh, search functionality this is actually easy and uh, I'm going to show you so I have this is uh, our application alright so what we're going to add what we, what we need we need a form here okay or uh, input here so we can search alright so what you're going to do before before we create the table here let's just uh, create a div with call md12 and uh, text center this is all bootstrap classes we can use because we are using bootstrap so let's uh, add search here alright so next we're going to need div uh, not div uh, form uh, form with class of uh, let's say form group <coughs> all right the action is uh, search to php the page that we're going to create and the method will be post okay and uh, next what we need we need input type with uh, form uh, control because this is a uh, bootstrap anyway and uh, let's add boots uh placeholder let's you can say search 
and uh, for sure we need a name why we need the name because we are using PHP so we can target this name anyway let's say search so we can know this is a search uh, let's first take a look and see all right we got form here anyway what we need next so now whenever we press enter search something and press enter this should take us to search.php the page that we going to create so next we're going to need another page and uh, this page will be in crude crude 2 yes and this will be search.php all right so let's save this so uh, the, uh, this page search.php will look the same as the index page so I copy everything and paste it here so let me make this PHP okay so there is a lot of code that we, we are not going to need so let's delete the pagination code and uh, we don't need to know how many pages we have for now even though we can uh, use pagination also but let's make let's make it a uh, symbol so we can understand how the search mechanism works so what we need uh, let's delete this and we don't need a limit so we're going to select everything right and uh, the total pages we don't need to know how many page, uh, how many pages we have anyway let's make here a uh, if statement what we're going to say if it's set so if the user sends something okay search because we have already name we have a uh, input type of text that we called we called a name okay this is uh, this is it what is it uh, this name search okay so we can know if someone send a post request let's grab all this and paste it here okay so let's start from all from all tasks the task is here we have in our database so this is our task so after we select everything so what we're going to say uh, what we're going to type is select the start from tasks where name like like what like name this variable we're going to create this variable now so this variable this variable will going to get the value from the post the super global post the name search all right so this will contain anything the user that uh, the user will input all right so let's add a little bit of validation like html special char or chars okay so this will prevent us from uh, sql injection and something like that so after we search so the uh, this sql we're going to make the query here in this row so this row will be displayed here <coughs> but we first we have to check if we have any result right so before we create the table let's make php here and say if uh, my sql i num rows so this means if there is nothing in the result this row is here this is the row whenever we search something okay what will happen here so this means we don't we're, sorry <coughs> this this means we don't have any result okay I'm going to say else and we're going to end the if statement uh, maybe uh, here after the body tag php in def all right so if we don't have any result what we're going to do we're going to just display h2 let's uh, give it class of text 
may detect danger so make it read color and uh, text center <coughs> nothing found right <coughs> and we can give the user the ability so uh, to go back to index page index.php so if the user did not get any result he can go back to home page let's say go back all right so i think it's okay so we you don't need i think we don't need uh, the pagination right we delete it let's delete this also uh, the table will end here so all right we're going to end the table here and uh, let's check this hope hopefully this will work so let's say doing all right we got we got errors my score number all right so i forgot to add single code here we just need a single code so remember uh don't take any spaces or add any spaces just type as it is so make it uh, bigger so we can see this is how you how you write the sql you don't need any spaces or anything otherwise you're going to get error or uh, empty result anyway anyway uh here the if statement we're going to say mysql i num rows less than one so let's uh, test this if we type just a we got all the result because we have we have uh, a letter in all this result if we search anything that is not in our database we got nothing found so for example let's search for fixing we got the result we can edit and everything will work the same so we could also add pagination if we want but i want to make uh, i want to make it uh, a symbol for us to understand the search mechanism and how we can work with search we're done with the search functionality i think our application beca became better we could add more functionality if you have anything in your mind so don't forget to share your question or concern anyway thank you for watching and see you in the future lectures